Hello everyone, I'm Ben, and welcome to the February edition of the Great British Mickey Waffle. As we all know, I'm not trusted to host the show on my own, so I'm joined by Becca. Hello. Claire. Hello. John. Hiya Ben, I'm, I think you're more than trusted to host the show. I'm Are you sure? Like no, I don't. I don't. Bye John. I do. <laughs> okay, yeah, Peter. Hello. And Jill. Hello. So how are we all doing today? Good. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fine, thank you. Yeah, great. Did we all get the snow that we were promised last week? Mm. Yep. We were. A tiny <laughs> amount. We got a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that February, early summer that we were promised. Because they, the, they, the, they get the forecast wrong so much. I'm, I'm sure there's a heat wave just around the corner, just oh, around God. Valentine's Day. Something like that. <laughs> Quite nice, actually. We'll still be in lockdown and it'll be 30 degrees. Yeah, let's just, let's just make your own forecast up. It's all right. Sounds February bad. February brings the Six Nations tournament and therefore all is fine. We'll be able to get through because we're going to have some international, well, some multinational rugby. Okay. <laughs> That'll get me through February. It'll get you through the month. Yeah. So. I worked the Six Nations last time uh, at where I work and the cafe that I work in is very near the stadium mm. and it was busy. I mean, yeah, busy. Mm. <laughs> I think we're all dreaming of that first day when we can get back to Disney. So as me, as we mentioned on our live show last month, uh, we're looking for that Disney fix and we hope that we'll be able to provide some escape today. So Disney in 2019 launched a new mode of transportation. Can anyone guess what it was? A bus. <laughs> A new monorail. A boat. An aeroplane. Powered scooters. <laughs> Segway. That'd be so much fun. Like Mario Kart round Disney World. The tracks, the, the roads are just like the tracks. It'd be awesome. I think that's, I think that's called the Tomorrowland Speedway. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's a replacement. Yeah. Segway. Yeah. Uh, brand That'd be new, great. Brand new, brand new highway in the sky. Yeah. Rent a skateboard. Uh, and I've got uh, tell you one thing, Ben. I've got to say I was the most cynical one when, when I was actually watching this thing being built. Firstly, because it re- it spoiled loads of really good photos because there was just monstrous sort of <laughs> metal holes, sort of spikes up. coming out the ground. Yeah. And and actually, and secondly, I, I actually I felt it was just a waste of money as they were building it. And and I actually, th- and once again, thankfully, I've been proved wrong. <laughs> But yeah, if you oh, noticed, I agree with you. Yeah, if anyone hadn't noticed, we are talking about the Skyliner. Welcome aboard the Disney Skyliner at Epcot International Gateway. We're flying to Disney's Riviera Resort with a final stop at Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort. So we, we've been set a challenge by one of our listeners, and we're going to attempt a Skyliner crawl. So virtually, of course. So we're going to do a tour of all the resorts along the Skyliner route. So you don't need to worry about if you're afraid of heights. It's all virtual. So oh, good. we'll start from Hollywood Studios, where we've just been on Rise of the Resistance. What did we all think? Cool. I'm sure it was amazing. amazing. Yeah. Surprised to get a boarding group. I know. We had to up at 7am this morning just to get the app. That's all right. Thank you for doing that, Ben. Yeah. That's all right. You're welcome. Yeah. Even Team Wemp is happy with that one. <laughs> Even the drop at the end. Yeah, it's not a real drop, is it? No, it's not like Tower of Terror. Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've done Rise of Resistance, um, and we'll end our evening in Epcot. Where we might even see a soft opening for Ratatouille. Mm. Mm. He's got high hopes, but well, you never yeah. know. We might we'll find, Rick, we might we'll even find Sammy. In, we might find Sammy in one of the pavilions around World Showcase. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why Sammy's not here. She's actually already in Epcot. She's on her way to Epcot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> so the first resort, so we've we've left Hollywood Studios. So we've got a Ronto wrap and a blue milk in hand. So we've already started. Ooh. So and our first resort is gonna I be I want green milk. <laughs> you want green milk. Okay. There's always one. <laughs> There's always one that goes. I'm oh, trying to move one over to the fan. I want to yourself, I was off to the I went to the baseline tap house in uh, and I'm with John. Yeah. We yes, yeah. I might have picked well, up. Yes. I just, I well, that to be done well. I'm gonna start the day. This I'm treat I'm treating this like drinking around the world, you know. 
Okay. So uh, just just yeah. bear in mind this is this is drinkage of. Uh, yeah. I, I never say no to a charcuterie plate. So yeah. Is it time you get to airport, John? You're going to carry on each pavilion. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, so you're going to carry me into each pavilion around that. So. <laughs> <laughs> This is going to be fun. So, um, yeah, our first resort is Caribbean Beach. So, who would like to go first? I'm going to pick on Jill. Okay. Uh, well, I had a look at what was open at the moment and what the menus were because I've not got any previous experience of Caribbean Beach. So, I have gone to the Banana Cabana Lounge and I've got some loaded potato fries. Now, that sounds a bit boring, but... They are loaded with something called cotilla, which I have no idea what that is, but it's obviously something Sounds interesting. Latin American-y. And fresh pico de gallo, which is like spicy tomato chili something or other, isn't it? I think. Yeah. yeah. Caribbean style chili. So that does sound a, a bit more interesting than just loaded fries. And to drink, um, I'm having Minute Maid Premium Lemonade with Strawberry Puree, because I think that will be nice and refreshing if the chilli gets a bit hot. Okay, that's quite nice. How about you, Peter? Right, I'm also going to Banana Cabana Lounge, <coughs> although not having any bananas, of course. I'm going to have the chilli con queso, which is Caribbean-style chilli with pimento cheese, pico de gallo, and fried tortillas, which is... Just chili, cheese, and tortillas, but what the heck, it sounds nice. <laughs> yeah. And I'm having a peach coma to drink, which is a fruity mixture of orange, lemon, and peach topped with soda water. So we're not so I'm saving the alcohol for later, I think. It's a bit, yeah. a bit early in the morning, perhaps. <laughs> okay. Clay, I'm gonna have to go to you next because I know <laughs> what's gonna be on your list. Oh, okay. So I, I something alcoholic. Yes. Of course, we're not. Uh, I didn't realise this was like a virgin crawl down the. <laughs> I can't be doing that. If I'm going up on heights, then I need a drink. It's very simple because I don't do heights. Um, I'm actually going to Banana Cabana with Peter and Jill. We'll sit in the lounge. And on my list, I actually had both of those food items. So I was going to have the loaded fries and the chili con queso because they're both side items. So I was going for both. Um, so that's fine. We, you know, we can stick them in the middle and share. This is yes. a friendly thing. Um, but to drink, I am having a Kraken Punch, which is the Kraken Spiced Rum uh, with blood orange sour liqueur and then pomegranate and orange juice. Thank you very much. Ooh. Make it too. <laughs> very nice. How about you, John? Right. I, I really like that. I love the look of the, the spy the spyglass grill and the patio overlooking Barefoot Bay. And if it was there early enough, the pineapple banana pancakes, or if it was lunchtime, the chorizo burger, they just sound great. But it's shut. So I'm left with the choice of joining your banana cabana or I'm going to the main food court for something different. And it's in the center town market. And I'm going for the pizza slice. Which sounds really, which sounds really sort of dead ordinary, doesn't it? But actually, I think it's worth sharing with people that there's a lot of these places that do the pizza slices, and they actually do a a, a pizza, a full pizza as well. Yes. Um, but it just reminded me of a, a time we were at the Port Orleans Riverside, and we had a we had a bit of a nightmare because we were on the dining plan. Both the kids went in, they ordered themselves lovely pizza each. And then we got to the checkout and they explained the fact that that's not on the dining plan for one. It was going to cost you two uh, tables of credits, two credits for a full pizza. And I tried to explain to kids, look, let's cut that. But thankfully, <laughs> the cast members, had, they'd obviously had this happen a lot of times before. And I must admit, there's somebody, uh, somebody locally, Simon, who listens to all of our shows and watches, watches us live as well. Um, but he'd actually, he turned around and, and he, He'd warned us before about this and said, "Just don't, don't go for the full pizza." So, pizza slice is on the dining plan, and pizza slice I don't mind paying for myself. So, I'm, I'm going nice and ordinary on that one. But it's just maybe worth people recognizing the fact that don't get caught out like I did. Um, <laughs> but for the drink, I'm going to start with something that nobody would expect. Oh, that I, sounds. Yeah, I'm starting on the wine. No, oh, I'm, I'm starting on the wine. wine. Really? Ooh. 
a nice, a nice breakfast sunset, is it then? I think so on? because actually, actually, they actually sell in in this place. They sell the uh, Coppola uh, Pinot Grigio, and it's the same Francis Ford Coppola, right from Godfather fame. Okay. And not only is he good at making good films, but actually his wine is superb. And I bought a bottle of it when we, from the supermarket, admittedly not at the glass price that Disney charge. Mm. But that's my first... That's going to set me on the way nicely, I think. That's well, good. Enough, you can't refuse, John. I think so. And it's the only... It's the only actually, it's the only place that, that I've actually found that sells it on, on, the, the, on the homework side of looking at where we're going on our trip. Mm. And are they serving yeah. it by the glass? Can you buy it by the glass or do you have to buy the bottle? No, you buy it by the glass. That's a uh, shame. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just want to actually go through a bottle and a couple of straws, Claire. But that's the thing. We didn't need to get a drink at every stop. We could just got a bottle and just like skyline and just go round. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, right, <laughs> we just set ourselves up for something. We'll just wait. I wait till later on in the show. I tell <laughs> you, I've, got, I've got an absolute corker of a cocktail that I found. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, we'll wait. I'll, yeah. That's, I've done my I've done my homework for this show. Okay, beware. That's always a bad thing. How about you, Becca? So I am going to start off with John in the Centre Town Marketplace. I'm going for a sweet though. I'm going to grab the key lime tart, which is a graham cracker crust, meringue, and tropical sauce with a white chocolate ganache. No, not a white chocolate ganache. Sorry, I'm reading my notes wrong. Just a chocolate ganache. And then I am going to move over to Banana Cabana and meet the others, and I'm going to have a crack and punch with Claire. Because <laughs> I thought that sounded really, really, really yummy. Yeah. Well, I've gone slightly different for my selection. So you can call this cheating if you like. But for my drink, I thought I'm not going to get the alcohol in straight away, so I'm going to go for a soft drink. But I'm going to get a Skyliner refillable mug. Oh, so yeah. every stop, I can have an extra drink. Cheater. Yeah, so I don't have to. So it'll balance. I don't have to drink. Out, I can get alcohol in every stop as well as a soft drink. <laughs> so because then, it's about other, hydration right? at the end of the day. It, it is the yeah. thing. Yeah. You could get stuck up on a skyliner for a little while. Even better, we can share it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say even better. We can use it. We can use it when we get stuck and need the bathroom. Is what I you were say. <laughs> How much are you drinking? Yeah. Yeah, I hate How me to it's not me for the whole month. Talking about bathrooms again. So, <laughs> bathrooms you, again. It's you with the refillable mug, Ben. You're the one who's going to have an issue. Okay, yeah. and, and my, my, my food option, this was at Centre Town Market, was the Cuban sandwich. I thought just something nice, something different after a yeah. nice Monto wrap. So, cool. Okay. So I think we've all sort of had some food and drink and from Caribbean Beach. So I think our next stop is Art of Animation. So who would like to go first? Okay, um, I'll go first again. Yeah. yeah. I have to say that it is worth remembering that back in the baseline tap house at Hollywood Studios, I did have a glass of wine with my charcuterie plates. So I'm not being quite as pure as a driven snow as you might think. But at Art of Animation, I'm going to Landscape of Flavours and I am going to have a mermaid tail cupcake. And this is a vanilla cupcake filled with pineapple and topped with coconut buttercream, a white chocolate mermaid tail, graham cracker crumb, crispy pearls and glitter. And to wash all that down, I'm going to have a good strong Joffrey's latte. Very nice. How about you, Peter? I'm going to leave my wife in the cafe and I'm going to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the drop-off pool bar and I'm just going to chill round the pool with some cheese curls and a Captain's pineapple, which is Captain's Morgan spice rum and pineapple soft serve. Can't complain with some ice cream. Just mm. chill. Just chill. Mm. A warm Florida day, and we've been stuck in the skyliner for a little while. Yeah, absolutely. All of the two minutes it takes to get from Caribbean Beach to our vacation. This is the perfect day, remember? There is no stopping. No getting stuck on the skyline. Nope. No, that is true. And so no, that Claire doesn't have to have a panic attack. And no getting off at the wrong stop like I did back in 2019 <laughs> when, when Riviera wasn't yet open. But okay. the skyliner was. And did they shout at you, Ben? No, they just said, Where am I going? And I, 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 I literally thought I was at Caribbean Beach because when you, 
in the Skyliner, they don't tell you where you've arrived. They tell oh. you where you've been. <laughs> so we, I, I'd left Epcot and it was like, um, what, what languages did you learn today? What, and you just go over like the Ratatouille construction. And it's like, and tells you where you're sort of heading to, but it just talks about everything on that line. So it will talk about um, sort of Caribbean Beach, Riviera, but it doesn't tell you in order. So it doesn't tell you you've arrived at here. So that it's was like interesting. The test then. you got to yeah. pay attention. Yeah. Yeah, but the, other, the other side as well, though, Ben, I'm sure your concentration will be taken because actually the little the little sound that they make before the announcement, and there is isn't there is the Spanish version that's nowhere near as, as sort of catchy as the uh, Monorail one, but the sound before the announcement, it's just it's so much like Star Tours. <laughs> yeah. It's just like Star Tours. And you know when, you, you know when you're thinking, you've got on something... Come on, Star Tours! <laughs> you, might be, you might be thinking, "Am I going to get the one with Chewbacca? Am I going to get the the ride with? Am I going to be the Rebel Spy?" Yeah, yeah. Like your concentration goes to, to part. So I can, I'm totally with you there, Ben. I think that's it's, it's a concentration thing. I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I showed a bit of a lapse in concentration, but Ooh. I will put that video in. Um, it will appear on our YouTube channel at some point very soon. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. So what, are, you getting, are you getting shouted at? <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Not not shouted. Just asked where I was going. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, I've seen the footage. They were very polite about it. I think they were just confused because, well, like, why are you getting off? <laughs> <laughs> why are you getting off and you've not got a hard hat on? Yeah. <laughs> There'd be some health and safety body who'd be having a meltdown, wouldn't they? Just like, on a clipboard, just like walking around. Like, <laughs> yeah. I think it might have been the camera that asked, made them ask. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, I was probably trying to sneak in. That's what I probably thought. <laughs> oh, can't do yeah. that. No, not at all. So, yeah, and Claire, how about you? So Art of Animation, it's not a resort I've ever been to. So I'm going to go to Landscape of Flavours because it seems to be sort of the central point. Um, to eat, I'm going to have an Asian chicken bowl, uh, which is the Mongolian stir-fried chicken with broccoli. Sorry, Becca, it's got peppers in it. Um, and uh, served on jasmine rice because that sounds like something different. It's not fried. It's, you know, a, an actual cooked meal that's not come out of a deep fat fryer which sounds quite nice and a bit of a change um and then to drink there are two or three beers that i really really like and find hard to buy in the uk uh blue moon is one of them so i love a blue moon with the orange squished slice in the top so yeah i'm gonna have a i'm gonna have a big blue moon sounds very nice how about you john yeah, we've we've stayed at Art of Animation, and it's an it's a it's an amazing place. It really, it's just just for the theming. And I've got to say, if anybody is listening to this, you've never been to Art of Animation, and you want to, the Skyline is actually much better at actually getting access to it rather than going in your car and telling the guy at the the gate that you've just come for a look round. Because actually, that, that probably in this day and age, that doesn't go down too well, does it? Um, but there is there is a limited number of places that actually serve food and drink, um, and like Peter said, you know the, the actual the drop off pool bar is very much sort of the, the the place to go for for a pub drink, and the landscape of flavors actually is one of the best food courts that you could actually find. Um, it offers so much, certainly more than Old Key West and Saratoga. And so in, basically, in view of quick service offerings. The current menu doesn't serve some of the amazing soups that we actually enjoyed, which is a real pity. And I think even looking looking at that now, I would actually go and speak to somebody really nicely and ask with my most polite British tones if somebody could just rustle up <laughs> the, clam, the clam chowder or the chicken noodle soup that we actually enjoyed on our state was divine it was absolutely perfect so i would go and ask for that and if they hadn't got it i would be politely british and i wouldn't throw my toys out of the pram and i would just go on the fact that i've already scrammed enough at the studios and caribbean beach already so i'd probably i'd just go for like the turkey sandwich that they, that they had but the soup in there is to die for it really is and it's not often you find places in America that do a good soup, but they do an amazing soup. Um, and the one thing I did notice 
that's maybe worth sharing with everybody. Just because one of the things when you ask to go and look at menus, and I don't usually scroll all the way down, and for, <laughs> from from the art of animation and all the other places that we're, we're going to stop at, they've actually they've actually eked out all of the allergy menus, which to me was, you know, it's it's a real surprise because to to find this as a planning tool for anybody, but. They've got – you go beyond the kids' menu, they've got the most incredible number, and I did put them down somewhere and I can't find them. But needless to say, they've got gluten-free, they've got um, fat-free, yep. they've got peanut milk, milk, and the ho- they've got a whole lot of it. And I thought, do you know something? That really, if you do have a food issue, it, I think now at any of the Disney hotels – They've actually got it in hand, and I think that's a real thing for for anybody make you know making plans for the future to be really reassured about. Because I think in the past it's always been a case that they'll go and speak to the server, who'll speak to the chef, who'll speak to somebody else, and actually you want to know that you're going to be able to eat in these places. So there are options for people, and I thought that was that was really superb. What I was going to say is that it means that even if you've got an allergy, you can use mobile order as well because yeah. those things are within the app. So it means that you're not having to queue up when everyone else could order ahead and, and just collect. If you had an allergy before, you couldn't do that. So yeah. it means it's it, it's quicker and it's it's um, easier if you do have a, a dietary requirement that need, means you have to go off, off the normal menu. Yeah. And also if you're planning so quite far in advance as well if they go back to 180 days for when you're looking at dining and you get to look at the sort of menus and see what ones that you'd prefer. You don't have to wait till the day yeah. to then go, oh, I'm not going to be able to eat there or, or I should have gone somewhere else. It's, yeah. I think part of, part of it's probably because they're encouraging people to use mobile order now. So they need to have it up there for those that... And I, and I think as well, allergies. I think I think over the years... And I, I think it's taken them a long time to latch on to a lot of this. Over the years, they haven't particularly catered that well. It's got better, probably. Certainly, in, certainly in the past five years, it's become much more, much more pre- prevalent, and they've become much more accommodating. And I think that must be so reassuring to anybody who's trying to eat in these places. Um, but I'm, I'm going to finish. I'll finish with my drink. Okay, my. Drink, by dr- my drink in here is the one that probably people have expected me to start with. I'm going for an angry orchard cider, and it's going to be a real nice cider that I'm going to be able to take. In fact, I, I, I thought what I could do. Ben mentioned about those uh, the refillable mugs, and there's now Star Wars refillable mugs that you have to that you can actually trade in your um, your free one if you're on if you're staying on Disney. And you can trade your free one in instead of take that, getting that as part of your package. It costs you another ten dollars, obviously. Um, but for twenty twenty nine ninety nine or something, there's a Star Wars refillable mug, and it's actually it's one of those ones. It's a it's a proper proper one. It's got stainless steel in the middle. So right. quite a nice one. A nice one. It promises it'll stay it'll stay warm for twelve hours and stay cold for yeah. the rest of, your, rest of your life or whatever. You know. But, <laughs> <laughs> Depends what happens in Florida because if it's yeah. warm, it's going to stay warm anyway. Yeah, it's not when Jill and Peter. Yeah, yeah. 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 But I thought that was quite a nice one. I, and I'm, I'm a bit of a sucker for Star Wars merch and stuff. So, yeah. So I'll maybe put that, I'll put my cider in there so we can have it. We can have it. We can have it on the Skyliner and people are just thinking I'm drinking me, uh, me refillable mug. <laughs> that sounds perfect. Yeah. There we go. How about you, Becca? So I am starting off at Landscape of Flavours, picking up the Cookies and Cream Sunday Cupcake, which is a chocolate cupcake topped with cookies and cream, buttercream, rainbow sprinkles and chocolate ears. And then I'm going to go and meet Peter at the drop-off pool bar and grab a Big Blue Ocean, which is Savita... Oh, sorry. Well, I'm not going to bother saying the name. It's a vodka rum... <laughs> um, a bowl of blue. Have another go. <laughs> it's like pulp of almond. Ten percent. I was thinking of Becca. Red cut vodka, Bacardi Superior Rum, Bowl blue Cura 
Kado and Minute Maid Lemonade with a miniature glow cube. Are you going to get a job there telling people what how it's pronounced? <laughs> no, like one of these. My ability to pronounce—is this why you'd send me to the bar? Words in English is bad enough. <laughs> I think you might find by the time you finish drinking it, you'd find it much easier to say. Hopefully. Oh, do, wow. do, you know do you know something, Becca? I think Ben. I just want the glow cube. It's on to something. <laughs> Listeners to turn around to us and say, who gets sent to the bar? I want to know, because I'm the guy who gets sent to the bar. And I don't <laughs> ask for all of, don't ask for anything. I'll have one of them blue one of them blue mm. things. And make sure you, make you, sure you, you like get the menu and you point, point to it, it, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing that when I like like with like Mexican restaurant, or there's just something you can't pronounce. It's like I'll have one of them. Yeah. yeah, it's easier. Okay, so it's 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 down to me now. So art of animation, I'm going to refill my refillable mug. Not sure what I'm going to have, but I, I know you bought this vitamin water. Quite nice, keep me going. So you something... find another one then. Or another refillable mug? No, a different drink. <laughs> well, I have gone for something. But there is something that is different that I've noticed on the menu, which is just for this month. And that is the Valentine's special wine and chocolate. Yeah, I saw that. And I thought, as it's yeah. the February show, that's what I'm going to go with. Something different. Aww. Something yeah. Lucky you, might... Becca. Yeah. There you go, Becca. There's not a free go. ice cream this year. That's oh, yeah. good. All in virtual reality as well. Right. Yeah. There's, no, there's no end to it, Ben, I'm going to say. Right. <laughs> you might even get two. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, it, well, it's virtual. I'm not promises, promises, Becca. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm not even having to pay. It's oh, brilliant. it's all right. There's wine over in the cupboard. All he's got to do is buy the box of chocolates. <laughs> I feel really bad now. On Christmas. I feel really bad now because I'm. Uh, it's Valentine's and I'm not with my wife. I'm in the pub. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's that's quite typical, isn't it? <laughs> Just for people in general. <laughs> well. So we've all finished our animation. We don't need to get a skyliner to go to our next stop. We just take the gentle walk over to Pop Century. Yeah. Yes. Um, Me? Go on, Joe. Yeah, well, I will go to Everything Pop, which is the, the food court, shopping and dining quick service. And uh, I think there's only one thing that I can order from here, which is the tie-dye cheesecake. Um, I couldn't find the description, but I've seen photos. Oh, cheesecake. You know, but it's tie dye. It's really, really brilliant colours. It looks amazing. It looks really nice. And to drink, I'm going to have a raspberry lemonade slush because it's probably quite hot by now, so it'll cool me down. Is the um, cheesecake for, like the same colour as Peter's shirt? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <much>. <laughs> for anyone who can't see this, you can watch this on our YouTube channel. Yeah, this shirt is actually color. from Ghana, so we should have saved it for when we're talking about Animal Kingdom. Yes, maybe I'll wear it then as well, yeah. yeah. Okay, so on to me. Um, actually, I'm going to kind of follow Becca in a way, because at uh, Everything Pop, I'm going to have a Mickey cupcake, which is chocolate cupcake topped with cookies and cream, butter, buttercream, rainbow sprinkles and Mickey ears. So that sounds really nice. And I'm going to follow that with a simple Joffrey's latte because, hey, cake and a coffee, you need it. You need it's it. It's all good for a third stop on the Skyliner or the third resort. I'm like, just flagging a little bit. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm full of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> you can, this stuff isn't going to help that any. You can it's run back to a Met Cup. I, I was <laughs> wondering whether Pop Century was one of those. That had a secret menu, but I don't know whether they're still doing them. I don't think they are. I, think... I thought I was going to go for, but I'm still not. I'm not sure, so I went for the Mickey cupcake instead. I think it was the um, one of the All Stars that have got the ones where you can. I think it was All Star Movies, okay. where, you, where you ask and they like to play with like a um, sort of the glass 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 glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was cool. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I'd have anything that was on that menu. What was it? The <laughs> cinnamon bun burger. <laughs> a bit different. But yeah, I don't think that would have been on my list. How about you, Claire? Well, that was an interesting segue because um, I, at Pop, I've decided I'm going to nip to everything Pop and pick up a cinnamon roll. Um, I don't know if they're like the ones at Gaston's. I doubt they're quite that big, but 
a cinnamon roll is a cinnamon roll let's face it they're all good um but then i'm going to scoot over to petals pool bar and it, you know i'm assuming by this point we're you know it's probably two three in the afternoon so it's definitely time for a margarita and um, so i'm going to have the sunshine margarita which is the one with um contro sweet and sour and orange and lime juice thank you very much very nice. whoever's going to the bar ben <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I can do that how about Ben's you, John? Ben's paying at this rate. I'll tell, you. I'll, I'll tell you one thing. I'm actually tempted. I'm really tempted. If we're going to walk from out of animation to pop, I'm tempted to keep walking out a little bit further and just nip into McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just for the simple fact that we get we can get Sammy some nuggets, right? So that'll, yeah. keep, that'll keep Sammy quiet for a bit. I think they do nuggets at everything pop. <gasps> yeah, but also I'm, I'm not paying the price for a burger that pop are charging for the burger. <laughs> um, I'm going to McDonald's because actually it's about a quarter of the price. So there you go. But that's me just being that's me being tight because I'm like that. Um, and because and actually I would say the choice in here is actually really limited at the moment. And I, I've got to say, if I did manage if I did manage to get that chowder out of our animation, I'd either just go for a donut in here or dill pickle in a pouch. As a, what? That sounds yeah. wrong yeah. in every possible way. Reason, it just sprung out of the menu from me. I'm just going to have a quick look at the menu. Where are we? Pop center. Like, that isn't a thing. It's not going to be in a pouch. It's going to be in one of them plastic oh, wrap things. What sort of a pouch? That's what I was thinking, Claire. I just thought... So you know, this, this for me, it sounds like you've got... So oh. so you got a dill pickle and a sporad or something. What's going yeah, on? What? One of those. Yeah, I, one of those? yeah, I've seen one of the. I, I, I'm going to share the screen. Yeah. What? Ben's going to share his dill pickle in a pouch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, it looks. Yeah, it just looks You're so good, doesn't it? It just no. looks so good. That's, that's at least twenty. That's at least twenty of your five a day. That's wrong on so many levels. <laughs> and it does. But I tell you what, what a great choice. Imagine imagine the fun you're going to get with two teenage kids. <laughs> out of Can bike. you imagine the smell when you open oh, the plastic? Oh, no. no, it's going to be like opening. It's just going to be like opening the gherkins at home, isn't it? No. It's ranting all the time anyway, you know. That's why I only get one or two of them on a McDonald's burger, because otherwise it'll just take over the whole smell of McDonald's, wouldn't it? John, when we get back on the Skyliner, I'm not sitting next to you. <laughs> He's in his own. He's going to be. He's in his own. <laughs> <back here. laughs> wow. He's yeah. not coming with us. What we need yeah, to do is make sure he's in one with a space, so like one cabin, and he could be yeah. the next one. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like, but John, you can go on first. We'll wait a little while. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You're just going to disown me altogether when I go for the drink. Completely. Completely. We'll, we'll catch up at Epcot. So yeah, with my with my pouch, <laughs> your pickle, your <laughs> pouch, <and> pickle <laughs> pouch. <laughs> For anyone that <laughs> is I'm, listening I'm, to this, I'm then, I'm then off to the pool. I bar. They sell something there that's the same that they've got a, a Caribbean oh. beach, right? And they do an iced tea, right? They sell it in a banana cabana at Caribbean beach, right? And I have no idea of whether it's got any ice in it or any tea in it, right? Because the actual list of its contents just sounds incredible, right? You ready for this, right? Okay. Yep. Vodka, Bacardi, gin, tequila, Cointreau, and sweet and sour with Coca-Cola. I Tell think it's... What, if I can walk back to the Skyliner, I'm, gonna be, <laughs> I'm singing all the way to Riviera. I think it's one of those ones where they 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 show it with a coke at the end. They just like a tiny dribble, just, <laughs> splash, just a little coke splash. Yeah. Spoiler just with a coke. That's just that oh. is. And they call it iced tea. I'm like, no way. But I, I suppose it's like a Long Island iced tea. It's like a Long Island iced tea, I guess. Yeah. No yeah. idea. I tell you, that's that's. You'll look I'm after your pickle it. after you've drunk that. I tell you, my pickle will be non-existent because I'd be. Uh, <laughs> I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be singing. I'm singing. I'm, I'm done for after that. I don't bring spirits. I'll be stuck. I'm on Disney Food Blog and you type in dill pickle and guess what comes up? Pickle in a pouch. Please don't say it's pickle in a pouch. No. Um, Christmas pickle? Dill pickle popcorn. Ew. Oh, no. no. That's wrong. Um, 
to be fair, anything pickle is wrong in my head. Uh, <laughs> Disneyland pickle. <laughs> I've done it again. They have fried pickles, don't they? Pickle, pickle. Well, if yeah. you Google stuff, you get recipes. Still pickle no, soup. When Lloyd, when Lloyd <laughs> edited this bit, he cut that seg that segment that Claire just said. Is even funnier than the first one again. <laughs> okay, another recipe: easy bacon wrapped pickle. <laughs> Sorry, but have you got sweet, uh, salty, and sour there? Haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, a very Chinesey thing, salt yeah. and sour. Can't beat a salt uh, oh. a bacon wrap pickle. <laughs> Can we move on? <laughs> okay. How about you, Becca? Um, so We're still at pop century. We're still at pop century, I think. Are we? Okay. Yes. Oh. And I am going to grab the tiger cheesecake, same as Jill, because. Yeah, it wasn't really anything else I fancied. And then I'm going to pop over to the Petals Pool Bar. And I'm going to have the Blueberry Lemonade, which is three olives, blueberry vodka, that Bowls Blue Crocker thingy-mabob that was in the last drink, uh, Minute Maid <laughs> Premium Lemonade with juices of lemon and pomegranate topped with Sprite. I love that thing that was in the yeah, last one. that thing one. that was in the last one that I couldn't yeah. pronounce 10 minutes ago. Okay. The thing that sounded a bit like the monorail announcement. Well, there's more than tankers and I had on Dolores Poitas. There we go. Okay. I can so say you, that. Got the monorail in the drink. So. Sounds quite nice. Can you nice, say actually. that after you finish that drink, though? This is the question. No. Yeah. I couldn't. I said before. I don't know. It might, it might help. Okay. Well, Sammy couldn't be with us tonight. So I've decided to go for chicken strips. Yay! Yeah. So someone has to have nuggets or chicken strips or sort of. Um, and to go along with that, I'm going to have the Angry Orchard Crisp Apple Hard Cider. Mm. And obviously I'm going to refill my mug. Yeah. Yep. Nice. So I can't decide whether I'm going to drink the cider first or keep that later for the Skyliner on the trip to Riviera. Mm. So decisions. Depends how long we're going to stay at um, Pop Century for. Yes, okay. Okay. So cool. um, we're all finishing out Pop Century, so we're going to hop back on the Skyliner and go to Riviera. So, one of the sort of newest resorts to Disney, it is the newest resort. And um, there wasn't that much open, I think. Um, what was it? When I looked, I can't remember. Mm. I think all, all of the food places were open at Riviera. Open, but it was they're one not of... all selling. The full mm, menu. Full menus. No, there's not. There's not a huge choice. Even Topolino's yeah. choice was slimmed down. Yeah. Okay. How, how about you, Joe? What What are you having at Riviera? Well, yeah, this is where we're going to cheat a bit because yes, we could have gone to the quick service, which is Primo Piatto, but we have decided that when you have a resort that looks as beautiful as Riviera, and a restaurant that has such a good reputation as Topolino's Terrace. It would be wrong to miss it out. So we are going to share a main course and share a dessert and work it out that way. So we're going for herb fettuccine to share. And that has manila clams, mussel, squid, vino blanco, lemon and pesto genovese. So that sounds yum. Uh, and to drink, I'm going to have a pomegranate paradiso which is figenza vodka, pomegranate, lemon, and pineapple. So there's at least four of you, five a day in there. <laughs> okay, moving on to me. I'm going to share a dessert with Jill, obviously. And we're having the fruit of the forest, which is a blackcurrant mousse, blueberry sorbet, macerated berries, hibiscus cake. I'm going to have that to share. I love the taste of hibiscus. Hibiscus is, mm. is wonderful. And for my drink, I'm going to go with oh, the whole hog and have a champagne cocktail, which is, yeah, which is Moate Chandon Imperial Brut, Aperol. I'm having a Becca moment here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Antica Formula The Move. There you go. Very so that's nice. it. I love champagne cocktail. Yeah. Yes. So hopefully, that's today's like our perfect day. So 
fireworks would be happening while you're out on sort of Topolino's Terrace? Or yes, that'd be great. Yes, yes. Fireworks with a champagne cocktail, very nice. Mm. How about you, Claire? Um, so I chose at the Riviera. Um, I struggled with the menu at Topolino's. There wasn't a huge amount on that menu that really interested me. Um, so I've decided I'm going to go to Le Petit Café uh, and snag a cheese plate and a charcuterie plate um, and sit there <laughs> sit there, um, and enjoy them. Uh, out the, the, the inside of the, the café is really cute. It's all tiled. It looks like a little Parisian café. So it's a nice comfy bonquette seating. So I'm going to sit there and to drink, I'm going to have what is my favourite favorite cocktail of all cocktails um i will always choose this if it's on offer and i'm gonna have a nice classic negroni so okay. short short and short and um salty and uh, a little bit sour for me funnily enough <laughs> <laughs> i don't do sweet i don't really do sweet drinks or like i'm always i would always choose savory over over sweet so how about you john I should have gone before Claire, and then I could have nicked her ideas rather than her nicking mine. <laughs> well, you can come with me. Uh, we can sit together. Well, well, do you know something, Claire? I actually, I as much as Topolino's really just ticks every single box of somewhere you want to eat, it really does. And this time, I'm going to go for I'm I'm going to go down to Le Petit Cafe, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat. I'm going to get it. I'm going to hop in the lift and go back up to Topolino's. Right, so we can join everybody else, right? Because I'm, I'm I'm quite social like that, believe it or not, you know. Um, but all, also the actual the drinks list in Topolino's is amazing, right? Because I and, and this, I, this these are the drinks I can't have because I've I've chosen something different. But they do a really lovely uh, Moretti Rossa, which is absolutely as a as a Moretti is beautiful, and I think for them to be selling that up there is, is superb. But they did. They did a hard sparkling water, right? Hard sparkling water with a 5% alcohol volume. Now, if somebody wants to write in and tell me how you can have hard water. Thank you, hard water where we live. I can deal with hard water. <laughs> like hard cider, yeah, I, can't, I can deal that. That's, that differentiates between the fact that it's like cider, that the, Amer the American cider people decide that it's just like basically apple juice that's fizzy. But Hard water is a new one on me, I've got to say. And I just thought... Be descaling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How hard do water? But um, hey, there you go. But uh, the drink I am going to have, and I'm going to go for... I'm Actually, I'm going to go for another cider. Is a, is a French one, which is Domaine de Pont, um, which is a dry, hard cider. It comes highly recommended. I've, I did actually go and look it up, and it just looks... It sounds absolutely superb. Um it's fourteen dollars, which takes it into, takes it into the, the the champagne and wine sort of category, and that's before tax. And I just uh, my only thought is, I just hope it's actually as good as it actually sounds and as, as it's been recommended. But that that'd be my choice there. Cool, sounds very nice. Yeah. So I, I like the all sort of ending up at Topolino's, maybe cool. for fireworks, maybe. Oh, I've got to be done. Gotta be Hopefully done. they'll let me in because I'm not. Got any food or drink from Topolino's? <laughs> Let's just game crash it, Becca. It'll be all yeah. right. Just start talking and just saying you'd like this drink, and they'll just think they'll let us buy a drink at the bar. It won't be, but they're never going to say no. Don't give us your money. Yeah, this is Disney. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> just wave your DVC card. They'll let you in. Yeah, they might do. So I'm actually getting, I'm actually breaking tradition a little bit. So not only am I buying my food and drink from the same place. But I'm not having something sweet, and I'm not having alcohol. And you can so, pronounce it. <laughs> um, yeah, and I should be able to pronounce it. Oh, it's good. So for my food, I'm going to have the baked brie in puff pastry with a fruit preserves and grilled sourdough. See, I can pronounce all of that. <laughs> so Sorry, <bad>. Becca. <laughs> What am, I, what am I working with? Um, for my drink, I'm going to have the frosty blood. No crab. <laughs> 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 you jinxed it. 
<laughs> There's probably something I'm going to struggle with pronouncing. Um, yeah, I'm going to have the fl- frosty blood orange <laughs> granita, which is a frozen blend one. of citrus, blood orange, and orange juice. Yeah. Go by on the bar says they're out of that. <laughs> <laughs> what else can you do? Uh, I don't have got a second what, on my list. One of them blue things. Give us one of, one of them blue things again. <laughs> the blue yeah. thing, yeah. Okay. So, if, you, if you're really lucky, we'd actually have him, you know, one of them light up. You can have one of them light up uh, Buzz Thank Light ears on the side if you want. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, my, th- my third drink came with a glow cube. <laughs> oh, perfect. Perfect. Mm. Okay. So, Ben, what about you? Difficult. There was so much choice at Riviera that has been on our list for a while because obviously we tried to stay there twice last year, and just every time we've looked at the menus, gone, I want that, I want that, and unfortunately none of it's on there, or hardly any of it's on there now. Yeah, yeah. So um, I've decided to go for the sausage and pepperoni pizza from um, Premio Piatto. So I thought it'd be quite nice. And then I can take that up in the lift and join everyone else at Topolino's. And I'm going to try a Euro Manhattan. Mm. That's one of those. Annoyingly, I forgot to copy the description. <laughs> so I will just find <laughs> that. Have you got it, Claire? I bet yeah, it's more, more than one here. <clears throat> it's Gentleman Jack whiskey, uh, Amaro Averna, Coke, uh, aromatic and orange bitters. Are you feeling all right? Yeah, yeah quite I, I'm, I'm not carrying him back down to Epcot. Ben's going to be singing in Epcot. Is there any active drinks? You don't know what's in the. You still don't know what's in the. the book out. It's that hard water. Yeah. Yeah. It's brilliant. Okay, so we've finished with Viera. So. We've said goodbye and we've jumped on the um, sort of Skyliner to Epcot. So we're going back to Epcot and unfortunately we've got there. We've missed the chance to ride Ratatouille. So uh, one good thing. All right. We've all ridden it in Paris anyway. <laughs> That's true. The positive thing is some of, the, <clears throat> some of the walls have been removed and there is a creperie. Oh, so we can go and have that crepe. Ooh. Yeah, and right next crepe. to the creperie. Is a new set of restrooms, so we can go for a Perfect. quick crep in Epcot. In France. <laughs> in France. Oh, thank yeah. you. Well, that's even better. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. that's a shame because I I was thinking of going to the Rose and Crown. You see, in in Epcot. Yeah. Uh, because not that I could probably manage the sausage roll and chips or the fish and chips by this point, but I was rather fancying a Welsh dragon. Well, no, yeah. Uh, I so desperately wanted to say, well, I married one, but I'm... <laughs> I know, I was waiting for it, Peter. I, I thought, Peter, I thought you were going to say, and so am I. <laughs> Instead, you spoiled it completely. Oh, yeah. Has anyone actually tried a Welsh dragon? No, I've seen no. people order yeah. it. Peach, yeah. peach, yeah. peach schnapps, melon liqueur, yeah. creme de month, orange juice, and pineapple juice served in a souvenir cup. Wow, we've, we've never been. Yeah. <laughs> I've not been oh, in for dinner. I've only been in the bar. Mm. Not yeah. funny enough. I've got. I've got to say, I, I actually feel that it'd be really <clears throat> appropriate for us all to gather there, as it will be the only pub in the whole of the UK that's open <laughs> yeah. at the start of February in 2021. <laughs> and you know, I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to finish with a pint of Guinness, and just in case somebody asks if I have to have a snack. Or a substantive meal, I think it was described. <laughs> I'll, I'll have one of the Scotch eggs because the yeah. Scotch eggs, Scotch eggs in the uh, Rose and Crown are absolutely superb, beautiful. It is what you call a substantial meal, I think. That's it. It, it is, is there. Yeah. It is there. They are huge. Do pork scratchings count as substantial meal? <laughs> well, I, I haven't had anything proper for this whole thing, so I might grab the chicken tikka masala. <laughs> <laughs> the only problem is that it's bass beers, and I hate bass beers. It's hard, bleh, hot. so I would drink hard lager because hey, <laughs> I don't know what else is on the menu. At I, I haven't looked at the drinks menu. You can have, yeah, I've, the, I only ever have a pims when I'm in there because yeah. it's usually like half eleven in the morning. <laughs> it's, it's awful. <laughs> but if we go the wrong way round to the world showcase, then it's you know it's like half eleven. 
and where other people are having pints, I can't, I can't do that. So what him do that type of thing. Oh, you Come know on. what I mean by the wrong way round. <laughs> yeah. By going to Canada first, yeah. which is clearly, you know, there is you go left yeah. or you're wrong. Um, so if you, go the, <laughs> if you go the wrong way round, you can you can grab a pims. I wouldn't call it the wrong way around. It depends where you're heading to. If you're heading from Future World and you just want to go to the patisserie for breakfast, I ain't walking through the rest of the you country. You can't walk. You can't go f- um, past Norway. Not a nine. In Not nine in the morning. You can't. You have to go the wrong way around. Yeah, but the thing is, thing is though, Ben, if the Rose and Crown's open, you have to go in because it serves Strongbow, and you have to have a pint of Strongbow, irrespective. And I've met, I've met some of our listeners for a Strongbow at half eleven in the morning. I'm not proud of the moment, but it was a lovely <laughs> meeting. So I'll be, I'll be in family. I'm really pleased that you managed to meet us there. But uh, yeah, it's an early start, Claire, isn't it? And you've got to be careful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just remember, it's only half an hour or five o'clock in the UK. It's five o'clock somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah. And by the time we've got there, <laughs> it's going to be like six in the evening. <laughs> that is true. Yep. You can have as many strong bows as you like. So. Well, that's that's I, was going to finish. I was going to finish the beginning because so I just thought it'd be quite a nice way to roll it, all, roll it all off with something quite nice. <laughs> okay, as we are in Epcot, I think it's a perfect time to announce our winner of last month's giveaway. So we put all of the entries into a virtual hat, <clears throat> and the winner of our um, retro Epcot mug is Shaquille Ahmed. So thank you for writing such a lovely review, and we'll be in contact soon so we can send you your prize. Yay. Yeah. So, have we all recovered from our Skyline crawl, or do we need a bit of a break? <laughs> I'm, st- I'm still recovering from the review. It was it was such a lovely review, and I, I've got to say a big thank you because it was it was it was really touching, and it, it really it's one of those things that when you read it back and you're thinking, you know, we we don't know what we're talking about, just like you don't know what you're typing about when you do trip reports and stuff like that. So, a big thank you. It's, it is appreciated. So no thank you to everyone who wrote a review for us, whether it's positive or negative. We like the feedback. It's nice yeah. to know that we're enjoying what we're what we're producing, yeah. And what we're talking yeah. about. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So, with this Skyliner crew, do you think we can recreate this next time we're in Walt Disney World? Yes, That's probably. Yes. <laughs> you never know. By the time we get there, there might be more options available. Yeah. Some yes. more drink or food, and it'll be quite good. So. So over the past few shows, we've been focusing on various types of accommodation so um, that you'll be planning to book for your next time in Orlando, whenever that might be. Um, we've covered DVC, on-site hotels, uh, villas, and now it's for our final accommodation type off-site. So over to Claire as we take a look into what to look for and what to avoid when staying off-site. Thanks, Ben. So. As a visitor to Orlando, uh, looking at the prospect of a holiday to enjoy all the attractions and the entertainment available, I think most of us would be looking for the most cost effective um, option available in accommodation. So for many people, that would be a hotel near the magic or near to the excitement of Universal, but perhaps just one step removed. So in other words, the offsite hotel. Um, There's a vast array of of options available and it can be fairly mind-blowing and the distance that they span is huge so if you look right at the north by um, Universal down to Kissimmee and everywhere in between it's about a 22 mile strip of land between those two points and pretty much all of it is li- is lined with hotels and condo complexes all offering you somewhere to sleep when you visit and that's one of the main points that I think you need to think about when you're looking at staying off site. Do you want somewhere just to rest your weary, exhausted head or somewhere with more entertainment? Some of the off site hotels offer water park complexes, whilst others are really more motel uh, in style. Whether you're planning to drive or not will also play a big part in the location if you choose. Um, although many of the hotels off site will offer free shuttle buses to the main attractions. I had a look at which uh, areas the, there are, and there are three main areas for off-site hotels. The first one is International Drive, um, and although the heyday of the 90s has passed, uh, the stripper restaurants, bars and entertainment is still 
uh, one of the most popular of the accommodation zones in Orlando. And that's mainly due to the central location between Walt Disney World and Universal. You can even walk out for dinner rather than getting in your car. And there are things like mini golf on the strip that you can go to. There are pharmacies, bars, coffee shops, all within an easy reach. Um, and there's even a tram to transport you up and down iDrive. Uh, in 2015, the Icon Park opened with the wheel, which is uh, affectionately known as the Orlando Eye. Um, and that's surrounded by some really good restaurants and shopping opportunities. And it's right on the edge of iDrive. So there's lots to do. Lake Buena Vista is the area that's nearest to Walt Disney World. It encompasses the area around Disney Springs, where some of the best off-site hotels can be found. Just a short walk over the footbridge will find you at the Springs. Um, and that's all at a fraction of the price of the on-site options, which are really just a couple of minutes drive away. And then Kissimmee is the third area that remains popular with lots of visitors. The 192 used to be synonymous with dodgy motels and not a lot of atmosphere. But this has changed in the last 10 to 15 years hugely with the construction of complexes like Bahama Bay, Reunion and Margaritaville. So it's condo heaven for those who want a bit more space and maybe a game of golf. So, fellow wafflers, what's been your experience off-site? I can only confess to staying off-site twice. One in 1990, where my dad was being cheap, and we stayed in Altamont Springs, which is like, you might as well stay in Jacksonville. <laughs> um, and then the other time, uh, a couple of years later, we stayed in a hotel that's now been redeveloped um, at the top of iDrive, and it's definitely not a bad thing, because it was a really dodgy one. It was near the Belts, what was the Belts factory outlet, um, and I'm sure there was bullet holes in the window. So that's, <laughs> that was my experience off site. What about you guys? We have never stayed off site. So <laughs> is that go. because you don't drive? Yes, really. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's a, that's a really good call, that because because actually I, th I think I think this is this is also I think something if you haven't listened to previous the previous months of where we've looked at accommodation. I think this is a really big step on and a, and a brave step mm. on for many people is when you go to that offsite bit, it cuts your costs so much. Yeah. But it has its own little idiosyncrasies. And, yeah. and, and I, I've got to say that that whole thing there, and I think, Claire, you, you hit the nail on the head there um, in what you said. And I think for Peter and Jill, you know, it's one of those things that it stopped people choosing different places because it's the ability to walk to any amenities, be it for food, be it for entertainment, and, and be it even to some of those smaller parks and, and the mini golf, et cetera. It's, it's a big, big thing. And I, and I think that's where, I think for our listeners, what you need to do is sort out in your own mind the type of holiday that mm. you want to have. And I've, I know I've said it in past months. Um, and I, th I think as well, we, we would never, ever tell anybody that one way – is better than another because I know for a lot of people, the offsite stay is their preferred method of, of actually visiting the parks yeah. and visiting Orlando. And, and I think throughout this conversation, I, I would really, I'll put that across and I'd, I'll put it on the board that, you know, anybody thinks that we're being unfair because I think at times there will be an unfairness in the conversation mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> when I get there. Um, but I also feel <laughs> It is an invaluable way of keeping your costs completely down. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think my first bit for anybody who's never stayed off site, and your first port of call has got to be TripAdvisor, and has got to be you do your homework, you look at a map, you don't make definitely. the same mistake that Claire's dad did. Because oh, I'm I don't thinking, think it was a mistake. It was just way, way, way off. <laughs> way way. Off to where you would even think of going, you know. One of the advantages of staying in the Disney Springs area is that you can get the hotels that are cheaper but yeah. still have some of the, um, the perks. pluses and yeah. perks of being Disney. Yeah. 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 And I think that's the same for the – there are a, a, an array of hotels, not just the ones that are on that um, Hotel Boulevard area that, you know, the I don't really – I can't recommend any names of hotels. I know there's a B Hotel, there's a Hilton, there's a, a Marriott, very places. But you've also got the Bonnet Creek Resorts, which are within the footprint of, um, of yeah. Walt Disney World, but aren't owned by Disney um, and count as an offsite hotel, but are, you know, within the, yeah. the driving complex of Disney. Yeah. Um, 
And some of those, we've looked at different prices for them. When we've looked, because some of them do um, suites and they do sort of family suites, which have got a couple of bedrooms and a slightly bigger room, which which suit some families. Um, and they've been really very cost effective. Um, and yet you're still right there in the middle of Walt Disney World. So there, I think, I think you're right that there's lots of really great hotels down there, Peter, and you're so close to Disney Springs. So if you, you know, yeah. the, the availability of, of access to things is, is really good. I think yeah. it's, it's worth think, remembering that last time we went was obviously before Uber was really a thing. That makes a big difference now. Yeah. Also, the the rise of the resorts that are near Disney Springs and so on definitely has meant that we would look at those and we would have a think about mm. those. Because they're classed as good neighbour hotels, a lot of the Disney ones. That's so, right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Ones are off, so they give you the some of the perks. But well, we've we've stayed off site like, three times. Um, mm -hmm. We've and we've never had a car. <clears throat> right. So um, so did you use most... the transport that was laid on by the hotels? The first two times, the first two times we did, did the yeah. third time we used Uber, Uber. Okay. because the shuttle times aren't always brilliant. Yeah. A lot of the time they'll get you there, they'll stop at three or four different hotels and they'll get you there an hour after the park's opened, okay. two hours after the park's opened. Sometimes the only one and before, at the end of the day, is when the park's, before the park's closed or before the fireworks, or it's like okay. an hour after the park's closed. So you don't have that flexibility. So we decided to Uber on our third one. Yeah. And Can I ask you a question? Huge... On the shuttles from the hotels, am I right in thinking that you have to get them from the TTC, that they're not allowed to go up to... Yeah. So if you're going to the Magic Kingdom... You yeah, those, Magic Kingdom is the only one from the... only in the Disney resorts to go to the one at Magic Kingdom. Yeah, okay. so, yeah, you so have they're, not, they're, they're not allowed to drive. So obviously the Disney buses come in right in between the contemporary and the, the turnstiles to Magic Kingdom, the, the bus garage there on the on the right-hand side. Same thing um, goes for Uber as well. So Uber okay. has to drop you at TTC unless you request okay. to go to the contemporary and you can walk. So that's worth bearing in, in mind when you are – so even as a Disney guest, if you're staying on site, they have to drop you at the TTC. So that's – is that – Correct. If you're going from one of the Disney hotels, I don't know. No, if you're Sorry. on the if you're using a Disney <clears throat> bus from a Disney hotel, it will take you to Magic Kingdom. Yeah. But if you're using an off-site, um, what if you're bus, Ubering from? If you a Uber from a um, Disney resort, Disney resort to um, they, it's still TTC. Okay, so that's both worth bearing in mind if you're yeah. going for a dining reservation or something like that. Actually, you need to build in the time that you need to get from the TTC to wherever yeah. it is you're going, um, and that's that presumably adds to that journey time if you're staying off site and you've waited for the bus and then you yeah. but then it's like at, or monorail or ferry and it, it's a it's a thing to yeah. add on into it i have to admit though the price is what sold us for the uber was we worked out how much it was to hire a car and it was going to be about um about six hundred dollars for two weeks in ubers we spent how much was it, about 240 right yeah so you saved a so, lot of money and staying off site, you save a lot of money. I looked at and that's six hundred dollars didn't include parking either. That was just yeah. the car. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so I, that's... I, think, I think that, and I think Jill alluded to, and I think we said it in a couple of a couple of the shows as well. Is is that whole Uber has completely changed the game as regarding how you can actually access it? You're not then in the you're not in the realms of the shuttle people. You're not then being dictated to. You're not having to pay what. I think has always been considered to be quite an excessive taxi charge as well, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, to get in and out of the parks. And, and I think that's where Uber and Lyft um, are actually able to offer something that I think for everybody makes some of these hotels that perhaps previously you've thought are a little bit further out a lot more reachable for each of the parks. And I, I think that's that's certainly part of the planning that that – would change it for me and uh, you know and in these days where you're paying for obviously if you're pay if you're staying off site you're paying for disney parking yeah. when you're going into the parks which is at the moment at the moment before they decide to put it up again is uh 25 dollars yes you might have a resort fee that you might have to pay which i think in a lot of cases and i think that's where part that's part of the the planning process of looking at where you're staying you may have you may have a resort fee. A lot of places do. 
a lot of British people look at that and think, oh, I'm getting ripped off. It's actually it's just part of the way that they do in America to try and keep costs down throughout the year. And I, and I think you've got to be really careful as to not not holding that against the place because actually there's some really good places to stay. And if you have to pay a 7%, 8%, 10% resort fee, then yeah. I think you need to roll it's, with it, don't you? It's, well, we paid a resort fee for our first one. And it's, it was a bit confusing because we booked through Virgin Holidays. And on our first one... And um, when we got there and we checked in, they didn't realise we were from Virgin Holidays. Yeah. So they charged us a resort fee. On our second time that we went to the same hotel, we didn't have to pay it because we were Virgin Holidays. Okay. So some hotels have um, sort of deals with travel agents and yeah. whether you book direct with them or, um, and sometimes you could go to the hotel themselves, book direct, and there's like, it was $24 a day resort fee. Yeah. Okay, so that's really um, worth noting, and people making sure that they, if they th believe that the resort fee is included in their in their package, because they need to make through, sure that it is. Yeah. they they show yeah. them so to have your documentation to show show that yeah. you've booked through that that package tour operator would be the answer. And I think as well that that shows up in an awful lot of TripAdvisor reviews that you read that if if certain places have been unfair, and I, and I've read it about. Disney and Universal hotels as well. So this isn't just this isn't just particular to to off-site places. It's when places are not transparent with the pricing, either for parking yeah. for whatever, then people will actually kick against it in their their reviews on TripAdvisor. And and again, st start at the very top of TripAdvisor and see what see what people are saying about the places, and they might not be within your budget but see what people are saying because you actually begin to get a trend of location, resort, yeah. fees, resort fees, and and basically how people have been treated. And and it, it does, it's a lot, a lot to actually do. It's a lot, it's a big ask because you, you're, and it's in a way you feel as if you're, you're taking a risk going outside the bubble. You, that Disney bubble, everything's meant to be always perfect and such like, but actually it's the same. It is exactly the same, and you have the same rights as a consumer mm -hmm. as you do within the Disney bubble, the Universal bubble. And, and I think this this whole thought of it being off-site and on-site is actually is actually one of those little things that Disney would like you to buy into a lot Definitely. more. Yeah, and it's a it's a, it's a hotel of, at the end of the day, isn't it? It's, 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 yeah, exactly. it's a bit of a, bit of a trick. And it's probably worth noting that if you do book for a travel agent, not all hotels will have the resort fee waiver. But it's usually only the ones that they're partnered with, friends yeah. with, whatever yeah. that yeah. particular estate agent calls it. It's the yeah. agent, travel yeah. agent. I think also it's it's worth bearing in mind what works for you and your party. If you've you know if you've got little ones and need to go back for a nap in the afternoon, then obviously you might want to be somewhere that you can reach easily. If like if you're open to close park people and you just want to be out first thing in the morning and not back to your room till midnight, then obviously that's a different thing. Uh, we like tend to like to go back and, and have a rest at some point in the day. Yeah. So, yeah. And I, I think sort of, we, we've always found it's been um, when we stayed off site, it was purely a financial sort of thing we looked at and it's just crunching the numbers. It's working out the how much you're going to pay on a resort fee, how much is it going to cost me to get around if I don't have a car, or if I, how much a car is, how much it all is. And then working out, actually, if I want to stay on site at Disney for part of the trip, because that's the days I want to do at Disney, sometimes mm -hmm. doing a split stay may be a good option. But Because yeah. um, that's what we did on our last off-site stay. We had a few days that we, because we bought into DVC that year, we had a few nights to spend there. Um, and we just use Uber for the rest of it, yeah. So we could get around. And being think, in the middle of I drive meant that we were walking distance from Denny's, IHOP. Exactly, and I think that that that's a benefit, isn't it? That you can actually walk to places, which generally isn't necessarily the way things work when you're when you're in America. That usually you hop in the car and drive somewhere rather than just walk along the road and you've got breakfast, you've got a coffee, you've got mini golf yeah. if you want a lazy morning or afternoon. And I think that's some of the benefits of being in, an, in a hotel that's not inside Walt Disney World or uh, the Universal bubbles that are at either end of the I-4 section in Orlando. I mean, I think that 
the cost effectiveness of staying off site really is a bit of a deal breaker for some people because when I when I did a bit of research and I had a look on things like Virgin Holidays, I had a look at TUI, um, and and you know there are so many hotels that are really rated extremely highly by their by their visitors and the and the guests that they they serve and the people that are buying hotels you know holidays from them actually places that we've all heard of you know the the thousand different rows and inns um that are somewhere in Orlando they are all rated you know five out of five everyone loves them so they, yeah. there's a lot of people who go and and on you know it's it obviously works for them you know there's coco bay which has got a huge water air, water park area for kids so if you're somebody who needs to keep the price or you want to keep the price down so you can spend your money somewhere else or you know you want to go and do discovery cove and therefore you're going to economize on the hotel and not stay in disney you're going to stay in a great hotel off-site for a little bit cheaper and then you have more money to spend while you're there or you're someone who's you know being able to pull together the money to go and therefore the money that you've got to spend on a hotel is less than perhaps you you want to or actually you don't want to be immersed in one or the other end of the of iDrive you just want to be there and absorb what it's like to be in Orlando and I think as a, a first time visitor that's quite often the situation before you know where everything is because it's it's the unknown actually there are there are really great options that um you might think are substandard because they're cheaper they're not they're just different I think I think that's a absolutely superb point and I, and I think there's probably going to be people listening to this and they're probably going to tell us to shut up don't let everybody into the secret because actually they're probably laughing at all the people who've paid premium prices to stay yeah. at, in a universal to stay at Disney property and they've found a way they've probably found a a travel agent who's got a deal that can set them up within a certain hotel chain yeah. and they are able to get 14 nights in Orlando for a very, very reasonable price. And yeah. and I think that's, that's really where, you know, your point there, Claire is absolutely is spot on. You know, With a lot of um, Disney perks also being reducing as well, like the magical experience. Exactly. So you know, one of those things, everyone's going to have to think of how they're going to get from MCO to where they're staying. This so is it, it's the another. Lands it's a changing landscape out there at the moment. The other thing that I thought of in terms of the hotels that aren't belonging to Disney or Universal, rather than saying also hotels, is there are a number of chains. So if you have um, Hilton Rewards account, for example. You can get a really great rate at any of the Hiltons in the double um, trees as well. This yeah. is it, double tree Hilton. There's They're so really many, great. the whole and the Marriotts, all of those. Yeah. If you've got an account with them and you don't actually have to spend any money, you can just That's sign up for their yeah, oh, yeah. reward account. You can get reduced rates and you can also get free upgrades sometimes. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's worth um, just remembering that you can you can get a great deal for spending absolutely zero um by signing up to some of those things yeah. it's like in the hotel we stayed in um was double tree by sea world mm -hmm. and um on before our most recent trip we did uh, when we stayed there and um, i did register for hilton and we've got points sort of this sitting there Your crew like, points. Yeah. yeah and it's one of those things the next time we do decide to stay off site and we go might go there again um is that we're going to get a benefit of a cheaper rate and we don't have the resort fee to pay. And also, if you ever set a double tree, go to the front desk and they will give you cookies. As yes. many times as you like throughout your and stay. All, yeah. But the other thing is, Every, if you accrue, you know, your, your Hilton point, you, if you're staying at an airport hotel in the UK before you travel, you can get benefits and reduced rates there as well. So there are significant opportunities mm -hmm. to save yourself some cash. Um both in the US and at home by doing things like also that. Also, some um, off-site hotels do offer um, sort of free breakfasts. They do. So you get some buffets, some different options. I know we stayed at Clarion Inn, which we got an included breakfast for mm. our first morning we were there. Did we? Yeah, it, it was included. And we didn't use it. Yeah, you didn't know it was we used breakfast. it once. We used it once <laughs> and we didn't go back. Most of them you can get grab a coffee. Quite often yeah. you can get a coffee and a pastry or a muffin yeah. and it might only have been defrosted two hours beforehand. But if it's something to shove in your bag for when your kids are hungry at yeah. half past 10 and they've said they've sat at breakfast and said, I've had enough and eaten nothing. 
and then 20 minutes later say I'm starving. Not that I've ever been in that situation. Okay. That unfortunate Actually, hotel, we probably wouldn't go back. Yeah. To. That's the only one that we were you know, unsure on. You yeah. can grab you can grab something that's sitting there, shove it in your bag and reproduce it later on to fill a hole in a small child's stomach. Yeah. That's that's you know, that again is another cost effective way of not having to pay for a Disney snack. Yeah. And can I can I add as well about the, the free accommodation? Because I think a lot of us, certainly from the UK, you accrue flying miles or whatever that mm. whatever airline actually gives you. And we've 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 stayed we've stayed off off-site in hotels quite a lot um as i mentioned earlier in the show you know i am tight um so if somebody's if somebody's if somebody's given me a, a program to join and i've flown with an american american airlines actually did used to provide some really good value in their their scheme mm. which actually allowed us to pick out sort of parts of a trip if you were going certainly for us it was going for three or four weeks and what we were able to do is spot little gaps within the trip, either between staying up towards Universal or wanting to have a night where we pick a hotel because a villa isn't available or we're not planning on moving on to Disney property. And it, it fills a little gap and it costs it costs us nothing. Yeah. But it goes back to that thing, you get what you pay for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and what we did find, you know, there was... I, I, and, I, and I'm not going. I'm not going to name names. I think that's possibly really unfair because, you know. And I think, you know, the the green pool, uh, the following morning at uh, a certain a certain hotel that we didn't pay for is is possibly a little unfair because it was the middle of August and, yeah, even in the middle of anywhere, a green pool doesn't do it for me. But we didn't pay anything for it. Um, so yeah. Anyone, anyone's done it. Let, send us an email. I'll tell you which ones not to go. Um, <laughs> but we, but we stayed in a few, and and the ones that you get on the certainly in the American Airlines air miles bit, we knew we were pushing it. We were staying for one night. The other side is actually there's some bargains to be had if you start looking in towards places that actually have masses of accommodation, and so there's a like sir. The Grand Vacations at sit near sea, Hilton Grand Vacations near SeaWorld, the place there was absolutely spot on. But there's also there's like Orange Lake, which is a um, Holiday Inn vacations resort, and all of these resorts. I think we stayed at Cypress Point Resort, which I, I looked at looked at the past couple of days, and it's only it works out seventy one pound a night to stay there, but you get everything that somebody who's bought into the times the timeshare part of mm -hmm. these resorts but when they're empty there is a management company that will allow you to you know Just to, to, buy, yeah. to buy it as a hotel room and you're not in a hotel you're within a, a suite or you're within you're within accommodation which actually is exceptionally good at a very low price and it's it's maybe something we've not really touched on before um I did it's it's a um, legal requirement for timeshare to have percentage of the rooms available. Yeah, yeah. So we have and, that with DVC and, as well. And there's some it's value. It. There's value to be had there as well, yeah. though, Ben. Um, what I would do, I did. I did a little bit of digging uh, because I'm a bit. Uh, you know, I'm. I'm interested in all of this, and I'm interested in in trying to make my next trip to the Magic as as good as it possibly can be. You know, my very first trip was to Orange Lake, um, which is an RCI resort. Which is set up very similar to um, the Disney. Um, you buy your, you buy your time and stuff like that, and and actually the the, yeah. the numbers the numbers involved there are, are very similar. But but actually, if you buy at, if you bought at Orange Lake at the time, um, what I've been told is you you have it and you can actually you have it for life and you can pass it on when you die. And it's part of your will, which is which is quite an interesting in scenario, and it maybe changes people's perceptions of it, of some of the things we've spoken about before. Um, but the facilities in these places, you know, lazy rivers, a range of different pools, and yet they're looking at one hundred and twenty pound a night for yeah. a two bedroomed 
accommodation. And, and I'm thinking, you know, it's it, it's absolutely amazing. You know, we'd, we'd stayed in a place at the Crown Plaza at the top of um, I Drive, which is close to Universal. We, I think we stayed there for about two or three nights and did Universal from there. But what an, it was an amazing place because we got a, a beautiful room. The view from it, you could see the Epcot fireworks and the Magic Kingdom fireworks. <laughs> and uh, um, it, admittedly in the distance, I would add, uh, before, anyone, before anyone comes back to it. Yeah, like John know, with his telescope. Just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but places like that exist. And, and I think, you know, we had a fab- fabulous stay there. We drive every time we drive past it and go, oh, do you know, we really enjoyed that. Um, but there's there's something for everyone. And and again, just look at different places to actually get the right hotel for you. Um, there's no right or wrong, but I would say I would I would honestly say that the some of those resorts that have got timeshare as a as a as a wider part of their offering have got some real bargainous places that you can actually you can actually you don't even need to do disney or universal you can actually stay on site you can enjoy the golf you can enjoy the pools and you can just enjoy exactly what they've got to offer and i think that's really really important that people understand that because from our perspective you know this whole off-site bit within orlando goes from and i don't know if anyone's ever watched my name is l um and the motor the motel on my name is l if you haven't just google it is um, it's not very pretty. You go from that bit where you park your car right outside your hotel or motel motel door, and you pay your price there. And you hope your car's still there the next day. Very possibly. And then you also go to, but you also go to those higher range hotels that we all drive past that have got like fifteen golf courses involved in it, and I've got one's got a dodgy name which I won't say because it always makes me giggle. <laughs> And I'm not going to say it tonight because I don't think it's very fair on people because I don't think it's right. Is um, it something palms? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to say. Yeah. I'm not going to, see, I'm on my best behaviour tonight. Um, <laughs> and, but also what I would, but what I would say, if if those deluxe places are places that you look at and you think, I can do two nights there and I can give my family a most amazing extra in, into the holiday, they're, they're worth looking at. Because because there are bargains to be had, and particularly from the UK, if you go through a UK based company, Virgin and BA, I would I would say particularly offer very very good deals on hotel rooms. Yeah, you can actually pick your, you can pick yourself something up that's really worth. It just adds that little bit of something different into your your Orlando plan. And I think I think you're right, John. And there are certainly ways to save money. And I was just having I know I was I was looking down a minute ago when you were talking. It's not because you were boring. I was just double checking my information. Thanks. That um, no, I think it's important to get the right information. So I was just checking yeah. that uh, if you are somebody who shops at Tesco's, you can actually use your Tesco club card points to um, against hotels.com. So you can book your hotel in Orlando and subsidize that with Tesco club card points and you get yeah. triple the amount per point so you know yeah. five quid in hot club card points is going to give you 15 quid in a hotel so actually if you've got if you store up your club card points for a little while you could you can subsidize your hotel costs that way so it's there are certainly in terms of being an, a, a non-disney or universal hotel there are probably significantly greater opportunities to save money than when you're staying on site because yeah. the price is the yeah. price. And, yeah, you might find the odd, you know, 50 quid here or there that's different, but and, you're not going to get much deviation away from that. Yeah. I think when you're sort of doing numbers and working out a lot, sort of what your budget is, where you're staying, um, if you do choose off-site and if Disney do bring back annual passes, you can – it might be worth one member of the party buying one because that includes your um, sort of parking, parking. at the park. Yeah, yeah. So just have one can member that do that that can work out, and then you get discount for food, mm. and merchandise. So it's there are ways and means around it yeah. that might be a way of saving money on your next trip. Mm. Yeah. So there I, you are. I, I actually, I actually feel it's it is, you know, uh, it is one of them ones, and I did say it earlier is the fact that there's probably people who've done this for every Disney trip that they've been on, and they're laughing at us. Who stay on site and they're thinking you're just being you're being ripped off, yeah. and, and I'm with you there, and I can understand where where those people are coming from because I, I really do feel that there's 
there's opportunities and and so and and for us we we've even stayed in the uh, the hotel at the airport because it just fitted better with our ho with our complete trip and so for anyone who's thinking of split staying or thinking of doing something else you know picking a two three night hotel stay it just opens you opens your idea to what you what's actually out there and like i say there's there's loads there's loads to be had. there's actually quite a lot of money you can actually trim out of the trip as well mm. i was just going to throw in one little thing at the end here which is um a tip that i've used now three times um which is if uh, we have booked flights to particularly to mco from the uk so going into orlando international we have priced up the flights in isolation and then we have priced up the flights as a package with the cheapest cheapest hotel that that company offers so whether that be virgin ba whoever um and oddly a couple of times it's been the red line which is the probably the hotel that is the nearest to the entrance to um to world drive it's the one on the 192 that's opposite yeah. bob evans literally just as you're about to turn onto world drive um to actually book a package with the hotel the car and the flights was cheaper than the flights alone and in addition to that at the moment yeah, yeah it's a bit of a no-brainer. We didn't just, stay in that hotel actually. We yeah. we we site we checked in, got the key to the room, and actually my cousin and her husband came down and used the hotel for a couple of nights while we yeah. were we, you know, and I think it's worth just exploring that option as well. I the other thing that it offers is it because you're booking a package deal, you have that ab to guarantee around a package so that if something happens, you get your money back and you are guaranteed a refund. Whereas with flights, they just have to give you a voucher. So yeah. do check that option that sometimes by booking the package, you think there's no way it'll be cheaper. That's ridiculous. Why would it be cheaper? Um, it can be, which can is, also, is crazy. Can I also add very quickly to that, Claire, as well, if you book a flight and a car hire, it counts as a package, a package. Well. yeah and, exactly. that, and the same as a, a car in a hotel that type, protect, that type of protection in this day and age it, you know who yeah. knows where you know who knows what happens because to be honest i don't know what's happening next week so um to but to actually have that particular yeah. security yeah, exactly. is invaluable that's why well, i thought i'd just throw it in there fun. because it's, yeah it, you could do it with flights and tickets yeah because yes. we were offered that with them Virgin Holidays when we were yeah. doing our um, sort of first DVC. And I was like, well, if you wanted the protection, you can do the tickets through us as well. Yeah, and, exactly. and it gives you the same, because it's a package, it just has to be more than yeah. one part of your holiday. Yeah. Exactly. So I think it's really worth people, for you know, wherever you're staying, remembering that obviously things are fluctuating at the moment significantly so yeah, if you're thinking absolutely. of booking for for later this year or even next year sometime the year after do look at booking more than one component with the, with your um travel company because then you are guaranteed your your safety from abta um you know and that that surely is worth the the effort to to book those two components or more with the, with the same company can i can i add the the martin lewis advice on that as well Make sure you pay with a credit card. Oh <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The credit card company will cover that as well. Don't yeah. don't ever don't ever just pay on your debit card thinking, oh, it's just that's what I was paying for. Put it on your credit card. The credit card companies will take care of you, and they will ensure that you get back monies whether things go wrong, and you've got a, you've got a little bit more protection. Yeah. But ABTA, is, the ABTA protection is the one on a package that really does stand stand true and it's it's uk based it's not yeah. anything else it's down to the uk operators the thing we've got to say because of credit card we're not recommending you get a credit card which they lead you to get into debt we're just recommending a credit card for protection <laughs> no. so it's up to your choice to make the financial decision and if you're going to use a credit card make sure you pay it of course <laughs> and a Sorry, we, we, have, we have to say <laughs> that <laughs> it's yeah yeah we do YouTube. we do but there you are. So, yeah. so there yeah. we are in terms of, of staying outside of the Disney or Universal bubbles or SeaWorld bubble. There is so many opportunities to to save a bit of cash and also get a fantastic resort that um, may make your holiday better. Yeah, you might go from saying seven days on site at Disney, but you could do a 21 day trip.
like yeah. exactly money you save if you can have a bigger and better holiday yeah so so cool. do your research basically yeah. yes thank you everyone well, that's been the theme of all of these do your <laughs> homework, do your homework. <laughs> we're, we're getting our, getting our listeners that's a fun busy bit. So. but that's the fun bit isn't it the planning yeah, yeah. i mean i yes. think sometimes I think when you've been once, maybe, and you've you've done your holiday of a lifetime, never doing it again, go once and go, okay, when are we coming back? Which seems to happen to a lot of people. Um, I think if you've done that once and you know how the things are laid out and you know where things are, then you, you feel more confident and more secure to do that research yourself. I think quite often, and I've spoken to friends who are going for their first ever trip and they just want to book a package and someone else do that because they don't know. Um I would say that actually, if any of our listeners don't know, do reach out to us because we are more than yep. happy to help you. Yep. <laughs> We're not offering any professional holiday planning, but we, you know, we've got a lot of experience. And if you want to drop us an email or contact us on socials, please go ahead. We love talking about it. We'll chew your ear off. Yeah, and, and equally, the, the, there is there is sources out there that you can have a look online. You can ask your questions online, even if you know. Mm -hmm. And probably all of us are on the same sources as well, but I think I think as well, and I think that's so good, Claire, is the fact that that whole first trip, I think you have so many regrets about one how much it cost you, <laughs> and secondly, it's like your use of either tickets or time, or you ended up in the wrong in the wrong part of of, of Orlando, and it and and it's it. It, it comes. It comes with experience, and I, I, I've got to say, it's you know, I'm, I'm going to say it again. That's, that's three times tonight. I'm tight. I'm not going to give me money away to people who are charging the same price as another place online or another place. It has to be the right deal for me, and if that means a hotel has got it on their own website, if they've got it via. A, a UK, um, ex, you know, third, UK, yeah, third party booking agent, yeah, yeah. U UK Expedia doesn't set, charge the same price as the US Expedia, and you start looking around and you can get really sort of tied up in it all. But actually, the price has got to be right for you, and you choose your price and then never look back, never, never look back again and, and say, Oh, I could have saved 20 quid there or whatever. <laughs> sure, sure, holiday, you booked it, and then go and enjoy it. Don't look, don't think about how much it costs. You can think about that when you come home. Just think about the <laughs> countdown. Just put the yeah. countdown in your yeah. app. And look forward to yeah. when you come in. Spot on. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. I think we've shown over the past few shows that there's definitely accommodation for everyone, which fits a variety of budgets. So next month, we'll have a quick recap over what we've discussed and see what happens when we compare them all. So as we come to the end of this month's waffling, I'd just like to mention a few things that we've been up to. So all our live shows that we've been doing on YouTube and Facebook are now available on all our podcast platforms. And um, we've got a plethora of guests lined up to take part in our Share a Waffle series, which will be out in the middle of every month. And if that's not enough, you can catch up with us on our new weekly live show and on Facebook and YouTube, and it's called Wafflers Wednesday. So we hope you really enjoy what we've been working on and can provide some escape and a Disney fix while we're all in lockdown. Let's stay positive as there's light at the end of the tunnel and a castle waiting for us when this is all over. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at GB Mickey Waffle, or use our email address, which is themickeywaffle at gmail.com. There's only one thing left to say, and that is Waffle, waffle on! on. Waffle on. Waffle on.